Mr. Modi is seeking re-election on his own name. It is about Modi ki guarantees. His pitch is from welfareism to nationalism. In the last few days, the BJP has reignited the decades-old Kachativa issue. It has resurfaced following accusations from Prime Minister Modi against the opposition Congress in which he has said that they have callously ceded the island to Sri Lanka. Opposition leaders allege that BJP is exploiting this issue which is sensitive in Tamil Nadu to garner votes for the upcoming general elections. Remember, 39 seats of the state go to polls in one go, that is first phase on 19th. Let me rewind for our viewers. In the run-up to 2019 Lok Sabha elections, the Pulwama attack and the subsequent air strikes by India made nationalism a salient issue while voting. There was also great degree of public awareness about air strikes. National Education Studies 2019 conducted for the Lok Niti CSDS captured it. Look at your screens now. Around three-fourths of the respondents, that is 76%, had said that they had heard about India's airstrike on terrorist training camps in Pakistan in response to the Pulwama attack. In fact, the level of awareness was very high across groups. For instance, even among the poor, around two-third respondents were aware about the airstrikes. Though nationalism may not be the sole determinant of BJP's 2019 victory, but it shows that national security in general was an issue which contributed to the party's performance. Is that the reason why the BJP has gone all out in 2024, keeping in mind potential catchment areas of southern India, even as it tries to ensure that the numbers that it had won last time around doesn't fall? Let me give you another set of data today. Out of 303 seats party won in 2019, 224 seats were won with more than 50% vote share. And 101 seats were won with a vote share of 40%. So on the big fight tonight, we ask with nationalism being brought in and the Congress too talking about national security in its manifesto, how strong is BJP's vote? to make it reach its mission of over 400 seats. Joining me first here in the studio, Nishtha Gautam, senior journalist, Nija Chaudhary, senior journalist, Aarti Jairat, senior journalist. We have ensured dominance of women certainly here in the studio. And R.P. Singh, national spokesperson of the BJP. We have Shama Mohammed representing the Congress, Sandeep Shastri, national coordinator, Lokniti Network, Amitabh Tiwari, political strategist, and also Salim Dharani Dharan from DMK. Amitabh, beginning with you, how strong are the BJP's fort to ensure that it crosses 400, even as it looks at potential nationalism outreach in southern India? See, I think you highlighted the numbers uh, of the 303 victories. 224 were won with more than 50% vote share. On another 101 seats, of which it won almost 80, it got more than 40% vote share. So what happens is that of these 224 victories, 153 were against the Congress party. Now this entire election is predicated on the 200 odd BJP versus Congress party contest where the BJP won 175 and the Congress 115. Of this 175, BJP won 153 seats with more than 50% vote share. The gap here is 20% on an average between BJP and Congress and unfortunately for the Congress party, the regional players or the allies which it has inducted or were already there in the UPA, earlier UPA or the new ND, India bloc do not have significant vote share or presence in these 200 odd seats. So Congress is on its own in this 200 odd seats and the number of seats it wins will directly reflect upon BJP's tally. So if it wins, Let's say 50 of these 200, in the past 2019, it won only 15, then BJP's tally could fall to 270, 275. So okay. this is the crux of the election. These 200 odd seats in Gujarat, MP, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, Himachal, Uttarakhand, Delhi, etc., where the main battle is going to be seen. Okay. 
Sandeep Shastri as an expert again, as a sophologist, how are you looking at the forts of the BJP? Maria, if the BJP is to achieve its 400 target, two things need to happen. Uh, where it has a very high strike rate in North India, Central India and West India, it has to continue to retain that strike rate and dig further into where the opposition is there. In UP, there are 18 seats which they don't have. Hmm. Will they be able to make a foray into that even as they retain their 62? In Punjab, there are 11 seats they don't have. Can they, through new candidates and candidates from other parties, make a dent there? There are eight seats in Maharashtra which went to non-NDA parties. Can they make a foray there with the larger contest we have? So, moving towards 400 in northwest and central India is about increasing that strike rate, which is now 87% to much higher 90 plus. Hmm. And most importantly, South India, hmm. where the strike rate last time was 22%, 30 seats out of 150. And that's where they are looking at really, really doing well. Karnataka, Telangana, one strategy, uh, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala and Tamil Nadu, another strategy. So I think there is a mixed strategy they are using in the with the goal of 400 plus in mind. North, Central, West India is important for a high strike, high strike rate of 90% plus and South India to improve that 22% strike rate is their aim. And this is very, very clearly seen in the places that the leaders of the BJP are going to hmm. as part of their election campaign. Okay, so there is a definite strategy which is visible. Uh, before I bring in the BJP and the studio guests, uh, Shama Mohammed of the Congress party, uh, what exactly is the potential area that the Congress is focusing on? Of course, you know, Karnataka is the state which you have won, uh, Telangana is another state, but the number of states that you have lost in recent uh, uh, time. So, are you more concerned about trying to make uh, gains of the lost areas or are you of the opinion that it will be southern India which will be voting differently uh, and perhaps keeping in mind what it has been doing so far? Hi, Maria. A uh, couple of things. One is that uh, the northern states which we, lo which we lost this time, that is, I think you mean Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, and Madhya Pradesh, were the states they lost last time, if you remember very well. But they won them in the Lok Sabha. They did quite well, I must say. So where I see a problem for them in the northern states is Haryana, if I'm not wrong, they had 10 out of 10, which will not happen this time. We all know that. Uh, Delhi, they had 7 out of 7, which will not happen this time. Uh, Bihar, 18, which will not happen this time. Uh, West Bengal, 18, which will not happen this time. Maharashtra also, what I've got from my sources is the Maha Vikas Agadi will do well because there's a lot of confusion in Maha Yukti Agadi. I think Kirit Sumaya has given an interview today where he's grumpy and says exactly whatever he's done is being asked by the party to do and he's not happy that all these uh, tainted leaders are being accepted by the Bhatia Janta Party. Kiri Somaya is their own leader, a former member of parliament. Now let's go to the south, for example, Karnataka. They got 27 out of 28, which is impossible this time. That's going to be, we are going to get minimum, I'm saying, we will do, I think we'll hit 20 over there, um, more than that. Now, Kerala, there is no way they're going to win anything. Tamil Nadu, they will not win anything. Uh, Telangana, they had four, which I don't think is going to change for them. There are total 17 seats. Andhra, they will get nothing. Odisha, they were going to have an alliance with the BJD. That is not happening. So I do feel the BJD and the, BJ, uh, the Congress will do well. West Bengal, you know the story. So Jharkhand is also a state which they are not going to well. Punjab, 13 seats, uh, which again, they had two. Uh, the person okay. previous to me was speaking on. Okay. So, so the, the, the honest thing is, I, I cannot see an increase. I did, the 400 will never happen. Okay. Here, what I see is that the, the Congress party will do much better than what they did last time. We will, uh, I feel, will do quite well. And there's an undercurrent, like when you ask people, they're not openly saying like last time, yes, we are voting BJP. 
Many of them are quiet when you talk to them okay, because the there is an order. issue out there. So the silent voter theory silent is here. Silent voter is there. There okay, is a silent okay, voter in okay, the business okay, community. Especially. Okay, Salim Dar uh, Darani Daran, another Zoom guest before I come to the studio. See, I don't think BJP will form the government this time. Even in Tamil Nadu, they keep saying that they have some, uh, they're going to win three seats, four seats or five seats. But I've been working in grassroots in this election and I don't see any presence for the BJP at the grassroots level in Tamil Nadu. So there is no growth for uh, the BJP in Tamil Nadu whatsoever. Too. But there are about 40 parliamentary seats in Tamil Nadu and each uh, parliamentary seat there are about 1,700 PLA2 and you need about 18,000 youth level workers into 40 is about 8 lakhs youth level workers. BJP does not even that many uh, members here in Tamil Nadu. Uh, probably they don't even have one tenth of it. Most of the constituencies where I travel along with the DMP candidates, when I have also spoken to the people, if there are any BJP persons, who is present, there is nothing. Hmm. And having also said that, B BJP has, was for the last 10 years telling that they are going to fight corruption. Right? But, but we, we, no, you would know that BJP legalized corruption by introducing electoral bonds and BJP received do you think this nationalism will have takers in Tamil Nadu, in your state? Kachati, I don't think it's, so. sen it's sentiment certainly, it's emotions certainly. Uh, de definitely not. I think people, uh, voters in Tamil Nadu are very rational. Right? BJP has been power, power for the last 10 years at the union level. And Kachati has done something at the foreign policy view, which, which was nice in the union government. What was the BJP doing for the last 10 years? They, they haven't even spoken about this for the last 10 years. And they, they come and speak two weeks before the election. People clearly know that it's, it's an election, electoral uh, plan. And also in Tamil Nadu, people vote based on development. They want education. Okay. Right? Our government, DFT, has done a lot for education. Let, let, me, let me shift the focus and I'm going to come back to all of you uh, here in the studio. And beginning with you, Neerja Chaudhary. Uh, nationalism is something that we saw in 2019. There was that enemy also in Pakistan which was visible here. It's a friendly country in Sri Lanka. It may not have takers all over India but in Tamil Nadu which is a potential catchment area. I think, uh, are you talking about Kachativu? Yes. Particularly uh, having spoken to people in the south, in Tamil Nadu in particular, it does not seem to have resonance. They think it's, it's a card the BJP has played to get to the North Indian voter. Okay. with the card of nationalism. They are in fact worried about the implications because Sri Lanka has made a very strong statement about it. They are worried if uh, the relations with Sri Lanka worsen, you will be pushing Sri Lanka in the arms of China more and uh, that is not something that's good. There are already so many millions in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. So they are worried about the implications, foreign policy and relationship with uh, Sri Lanka. They think it's a card played for North India. Now, when Modi talks about, Modi continues to be popular 10 years down the line, which is which you can't say about any other Prime Minister, including Nehru, who was also beginning to lose ground in 1962. And I think worldwide there are very few leaders who re remain popular mm. at the end of 10 years. Having said that, what you were talking about, the central issue for 2024 election is Narendra Modi for the BJP. And that Modi guarantee that you talked about, that is equal to nationalism, as you said, social welfareism, plus Modi's own personality. Strong leaders or people, the word they use is, yeah, we are unhappy, we are dissatisfied, but it's a mal lenge, kisi na kisi tarah. Now, they will play, the, they will try and play the nationalism card because they have to retain the peak that they reached in 2019 in North Indian state. What Shama was talking about, 25 out of 25 in Rajasthan, 20, 28 out of 29 in Madhya Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Himachal, you know, completely top, Haryana 10 out of 10. Even Karnataka, hmm. where they hope to make gains, they are 25 out of 28. So how are they going to make gains with the Congress government there? So where is it that they are going to get more seats if they can retain what they had. That itself is a big challenge. And you know, can they retain? That's the question that I'm asking on the big five. Well, if, uh, you know, they may lose one, two, three like that in mm. different states, provided the opposition hangs together cleverly, smartly. The, everything hinges on that. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, it's going, if the opposition plays the game, even <laughs> with all the constraints that they have, it's, uh, it's, it's going and to be. And in 200 odd seats, it's a direct contest. 
and that's where we often say that it's advantage BJP Nishtha. You know, uh, can I can I come uh, to um, uh, to to the idea of nationalism first? You know, uh, because because uh, everything hinges on this this uh, optimization of nationalism, and it is also about. Uh, the opposition, you know, how it responds to the idea of nationalism and that brings us to the, 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 the brass tacks of, you know, the tallies of, um, of BJP and uh, other parties. It is part of the political imaginary nationalism. It has always been and not just in India but everywhere in the world. I think the biggest mistake that the opposition in India made was in 2014 when it, it kind of uh, exiled nationalism from its political imaginary. And then they are they are they are they are left grappling with uh, with this with this chaos because the BJP actually very smartly took that space. And if you are picking up, um, you know, if you if you are now saying that okay, do we reach from from a certain number from from three hundred whatever number to um, more than four hundred uh, apki bar char so par? I think that is what is going to give us clues into what the BJP strategy is, not lose any space in the political imaginary. Hold on to what you have, your strengths. And as Neerja ji said that, the, that the, uh, the election is going to be about Narendra Modi and Narendra Modi means everything that she just said. Yes, so and in that case, uh, Aarti, Narendra Modi, the central figure, remains powerful and perhaps uh, in recent memory the most uh, popular leader uh, and he would retain what he holds he is trying to hold on to what the BJP has while looking at potential areas. Yes. Uh, I, again I want to bring, go back to this nationalism <laughs> issue since you yes. raised it and you know we've talked about it. You know uh, nationalism when it comes to Pakistan hmm is a very emotive issue in India and this is really across the whole of North India. In 2019, nationalism was predicated on Bala Court, which was an attack in Pakistan on terror training camps. Hmm. Here, they, try, they don't have a peg to hang nationalism on this time. Kachativu is a 50-year-old issue, yeah. relevant only maybe to Tamil Nadu. You know, I don't think it has any resonance in North India whatsoever. I mean, all of us have been kind of, you know, going, uh, you know, looking, doing Google searches. What is Kachativu? Where did it come from? And so on and so forth. Apart from which, you know, like they did in 2019 when they called Bangladeshi migrants termites hmm. and relations with Bangladesh nosedived. It took them a whole year of back channel diplomacy to bring relations back on an even keel. And Bangladesh is a very important country for us, particularly given the fact that China is trying to make deep inroads, you know, into our neighborhood. Hmm. Same thing with Sri Lanka. You know, we've already had strong statements from the foreign minister. The Sri Lankan media has gone overboard. You know, you're again in danger of pushing. Uh, uh, just last week, Sri Lanka signed a major infrastructure project with China. So, you know, you are, in you are actually endangering India's security by giving the space to China in our neighborhood by raking up dead issues. So, you know, this... This election, I don't think they have a peg to hang the nationalism issue on. So this election is really about Modi, what Modi has done in the last 10 so years, then in that case, his welfare schemes, his Modi personality, the man Modi is the man. strong enough for ensuring that the forts that they have created are impregnable. Largely because the opposition does not have a figure to match Modi. There's no, no figure really on the other side. And if you look at it, I mean, everybody's saying, so who, so who, so who? I think, you know, in these days of personality contests, the days are gone when you say, we'll decide the prime minister after the elections. Mm. Those days are gone. Mm. Everybody wants to know who's going to be the prime minister. And the opposition does not have Doesn't a figure have that of that And R.P. Singh has been extremely calm and dignified in the presence of all the, uh, you know, senior journalists all, who are there in the friends. studio. All, all old they're, friends. They're, they're not only old friends, they're such a seasoned people. I mean, yeah, I mean, senior and, journalists. And, and, no, 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 being senior is one point. I mean, they are seasoned also. They know, they have seen through every part of the history in the recent past. I mean, since 77, they have been all active in the Indian politics. 
and they know what happened when and and what is the context to what is happening today hmm. and even i mean they all i thought someone will brought the issue of cultural nationalism also i mean nationalism is not only kind confined to area or 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 a, or a, or a topographic domain i mean there's a cultural nationalism which is happening on ground and hmm. please i'll appreciate ask your uh, 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 your teams to go and check on ground on up bihar madhya pradesh rajasthan chatisgarh uh, punjab i mean I'm sorry. So, uh, someone said Punjab. Sorry, Shamma Mama said nothing in Punjab. I, I, I am regularly in touch with Punjab. I keep going to Punjab uh, on and off. Uh, this is an issue of cultural nationalism there in Punjab also. Uh, hmm. Although there, there are two poles there, but yet the, 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 there is a big chunk which is talking about one part of the cultural nationalism. I'm accepting it. So uh, it's not only nationalism; it's cultural nationalism. It's the beneficiaries which have been benefited from the schemes hmm. of the Prime Minister Modi and then. which is really reach out to the poorest of poorest i mean okay. at the village end um, uh, sorry i'll take another second i was there in the jalandhar election last by elections they said hor kuch hoya nahi hoya karich piche toilet aa gaya that is big thing the, the poor women uh, the the uh, pe- people who come from the chirur caste or the tra- uh, or the majbi sex i mean they, they they were very happy with the, the there's a pub, there's a toilet at home i mean there's a ro- roof on the head there's a gas connection there is a water which has come at the doorstep so these are things which are are working in favor of prime minister modi and and in, in favor of bjp also yes. and give me another another second please you said you spoke about 330 seats and probably some 100 seats where we uh, could get 40% and uh, 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 more than 224 sorry 224 we got 50% and plus oh, yes uh, maria please check on your people we started working 5 years ago on all those seats we we didn't sleep we are not waiting for the last last moment to th- for things to happen mm-hmm. our our ministers our member parliaments were assigned allocated seats which we lost by ma- small margins and they have worked on those seats throughout so it is a cadre which has been charged of one the uh, uh, the seats were being taken care or, or the the voters were being taken care by ministers north east i mean 40 times our ministers would have gone there no i mean not in the indian history ever so much focus has been on north east we are not missing on north east odisha mark my word we will do miracles in odisha and also there is strong indian government against why uh, uh, jagan reddy and then we are going to write that indian government see also in andhra pradesh okay so you have given me a pan india picture in which you are making gains but yes shama wanted to come in and then i'll speak to nishta go ahead no he spoke about punjab hmm. i just want to tell him i very i very much admire the punjabis and the sikhs because they are the only ones who could resist and re- uh, get pm modi to remove the black farm laws uh what i want to tell him is that when they were protesting the farmers more than 700 of them died did the prime minister of india say one word to them did he say i i feel sorry they have died i am sad they died not, not a single word what happened during that time all those farmers punjabis were known as khalistanis they were called naxalites what our name calling was done by our own ministers i'm not saying the prime minister called but the ministers of your party call them khalistanis they are always known as khalistanis so what are you talking about if you go to punjab even now the farmers are protesting and i want to ask you one more thing hmm. during our time when there was a protest we didn't put nails on the road we didn't block them from entering delhi they could come in they protested in La- ram leela grounds we all remember why were you why do you not allow peaceful protesters like our farmers who are begging for a legal msp to come in let them protest you block them off completely the other one i want to talk about is kachitibu the sri lankans are asking if you love us tamil so much i mean not the sri lankans sorry the indian tamils are asking if you love us so much why didn't you include sri lanka in caa you cannot there are a lot of tamil uh, refugees in our country you cannot get citizenship up to 2014 because they were not included in the citizenship amendment act and okay. the truth of the matter why they were not including is the minorities are there are the tamil hindus as well as the muslim tamils so you didn't want the muslims okay. involved I'm in missing, any aspect you respond to this and then i'll uh, bring uh, it uh, as far uh, punjab goes let me go into little detail ravni singh bit to is your sitting mp who has switched side and is what are you saying please go through details of I that give me a second okay i never interrupted and also Uh, talk about drinku a man who was allocated seat he, he was announced as a, a, a member parliament from the aam aadmi party and a sitting M- member parliament a sitting mla from aam aadmi party 
There's lots which have changed on ground. I mean, I accept, yes, farm, farm bills, there was a problem at that time. There was little repulsion at that time. But that has over now. The chapter is far over now. And then people know what's the truth. And then please don't cast a guy by saying that seven people died because of farm laws. No. When people died, the natural death, yes, they died because they were at, they, they were at protest, but they were, it's not that they, they were being killed, some year projected okay. like as they were being killed. Well, so give, me give me another, another second, another second, yes. another second. And please, Shama, ask your leader to focus on states which they should, UP, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Maharashtra, you are going to be wiped off of these states. Okay. Uh, coming to Amitabh Tiwari. Amitabh Tiwari, we are looking at gains and losses for BJP in 2019 and I'll ask only Amitabh on the screen now please uh, because we'll be putting out those graphics. Uh, Amitabh, in Uttar Pradesh BJP loses 9 seats from 2014 if we were to do a direct comparison 2014-2019. Bihar again minus 5, Andhra Pradesh minus 2. In all a significant minus 23 in comparison to 2014 and 2019. Uh, 2019 to 2024. Where are the numbers coming from? See, essentially, and I'm how sure much are you able to retain this? Because there is also an India block, which has see, strong in regional in players. <clears throat> yeah. So what we have to see is that this 2023, this 2019 number is fairly important because if you recall, the top three states where Modi did rallies were UP, West Bengal, and Odisha. Hmm. The party was perhaps aware that they are going to lose seats in the north of India, Bihar and UP as you said, and they already started doing rallies in these two states and in these two states only they gained almost 24-25 seats. So similarly this time what the party is doing is that they know that they can have some losses in these states where they have maxed out. So they have adopted a look east and a look south policy. That is why we see a lot of focus of the Prime Minister in the southern part of India, including states like Tamil Nadu and Kerala. What is happening is that despite the India bloc forming formidable alliances, in some key states like West Bengal, as well as in Bihar, the strength of the alliance has reduced significantly because in West Bengal there is no alliance and in Bihar, the creator of India Bloc has hopped from India Bloc to the NDA Bloc. In UP also, the alliance is fairly weak because the RLD has hopped from India Bloc to NDA and there is no BSP in this entire process. So they have to maintain the 303 seats. That's fairly important because even if they have to win 400, 300 they have to maintain. That's fairly important. And what everybody is discussing, even the Congress, is that they could lose one year, two year, three year. Can we name any state where Congress is going to win more seats than the BJP from last time? There's not a single state perhaps. We were talking about Punjab. Punjab BJP might win or not win is a different story. The Congress will not be able to perhaps win eight seats because they have an alliance partner who is a direct competitor. So the dynamics of the election is that they need to maintain those seats and on those seats, there is no significant threat of a significant dent being posed by the India bloc or the Congress party. Okay. So where are the gains of the Congress coming? Nija? That's a good question. Where are the gains of the Congress <laughs> coming? Question. Uh, no, Karnataka definitely. Hmm. Because last time, as I said, 25 out of 28 the BJP got. So certainly the Congress will get at least half the seats. That's expected. Telangana, I think BJP can up its tally. It had four. It may go up a couple of seats because I think the BRS is going to virtually collapse. It's going to be a Congress versus uh, a BJP fight in Telangana. So that's where certainly it will come. You know, but just going back to just one small point I want to make. And that is that the BJP hoped that the Ram Temple would be the Bala court of 2024. You know, create that nationalistic fervor. Mm. Now, Temple has made people very happy. A journalistic colleague told me this. It's a very interesting story. He was covering the consecration of the Ram Temple. He was there for a couple of weeks, after which he went back home to Varanasi. And he said four of his friends, professionals, mm. 
two uh, doctors, one insurance agent, one somebody else, they actually came and touched his feet yes. because yes. he had been to Ayodhya. And I heard this story in Maharashtra where there is not that much traction on the Ram temple and senior people touching the feet of somebody junior because it had been to the Ram temple. But does that mean will they vote that way? They are very happy, they are going to see the temple. Uh, I think from RP, if you can honestly tell us this, from what I hear from all accounts, the BJP had hoped that Balakot it, uh, temple would add 5 to 6 percent of the vote this time also to its kitty, but actually it is not having that kind, you know the movement is petering out somewhat hmm. and that's why I think so the, the BJP is looking. So the peaked in on 22nd of January when there was the consecration. That was a high. Yes, that now, was a high and now. And the Prime Minister also has not been speaking on it. So therefore I think they are trying to latch on to some issue, you know, which will create this nationalistic fervor. Because UP, I believe UP is very important for the BJP. That's a state where they can ramp up their tally to 62 in 2019. They can ramp it by 10 seats at least. Yes, and Mayavati is going alone. So, yeah. it's a triangular contest. Yes, and absolutely. And yes. I think that is the critical difference, at least as far as UP is concerned, yes. between last time and this time. Last time, there was a very strong alliance between the BSP and SP. Hmm. You know, on the ground and actually those who attended their rallies. And you know, said that there was seats. Yes, and they managed 15 seats. And there was a lot of spark, you know, in hmm. that. Today, Mayavati is going on her own. She is you know, actually, has gone. Uh, RLD has gone. Has gone. Hmm. SP and Congress together, you know, it gives the BJP the opportunity to revive fears of this Muslim Yadav domination, the, you know, the Gunda Raj, as, uh, you know, the SP rule was known as. So, I think the BJP is, and with the Ram Temple together, I think the BJP is on a fairly good wicket in UP. The question is, you know, 303, yes, they have to retain. The thing is, where do they get the 100 seats from? Where are 100 they getting 100 is a huge okay, let number. Me ask that to you know, I mean, you know, to Chastri. do that, they would have to sweep the south. Can I, can I come and in? can they Maria. sweep the south? Can yeah. they sweep the south? Professor Sandeep Shastri will, will respond Canada? to that and then I bring in Nishta. Yes. You've been promising bringing me. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm coming to you. <laughs> yeah, Maria, I think that the vision of 370 will remain unfulfilled as long as the BJP does not make a penetration in the south and is not able to retain the seats it has in the north. I think this is a clear picture hmm. and the BJP is hoping and it's a very tough task of repeating its performance in Karnataka. If it repeats its performance in Karnataka, you're talking about 100% strike rate. They won 25 seats last time. They are contesting 25 seats this time. So we are, hmm. the expectation is they should win all. And as was said by many panelists, the Congress has made its way back to being a party in the race in Karnataka. And I think the Congress is a little better off in Telangana because the memory of the assembly election victory is much closer than the memory in Karnataka. So, I think these are two critical states and how the BJP does in these two states will be a factor in the movement towards 370 or remaining at 305 or sliding a little down. I think the South would make a crucial difference. One more small point, Maria. When talking about Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Andhra, I think what the Prime Minister said in an interview recently when asked whether he is looking at the 2029 elections and he said, no, no, what are you talking about 2029? I am looking at 2047. Hmm. Uh, I sometimes speak that that is an appropriate comment for Tamil Nadu and Kerala. It is a long-term strategy and not about the 2024 elections. 2024 will be like a T20 match and the long term is winning a series a test series for them. So this time around, quickly in Tamil Nadu, their aim is to become the opposition to a Dravid party, push the D Anna DMK out of the contest and make themselves the principal leader of the opposition alliance. That would be their attempt here. A few seats because of that is what may happen. Kerala getting a toehold in Kerala where you have a very stiff competition which again seems to be a huge challenge they face. They are riding piggyback on the, DM, on the TDP in Andhra, 
and hoping through that they can gain two three seats so one two seats two three seats is what we are talking about in these three southern states yes. but the basic fight they are looking for and seats they are looking for are in telangana and karnataka yes so that that number 303 or or 370 or 400 ke par you know it's it's ambitious the, the bjp says that you know even in bengal when they won 18 seats they have set a mission of 35 not uh, whether it's achievable or not that remains to be seen but nishta the larger question here is that what is becoming evident that it's fourth the 303 absolutely. number is actually going down no here i th- I, do, i don't think it is going down maria to be very honest because uh, i like to be to be realistic you know my i do not let khushfehmi uh, over uh, power <laughs> with, you know the the the, the, the rational absolutely um you know uh, without passion analysis and the thing is that when again coming back to nationalism we are just ignoring the windfall gains that nationalism can actually achieve right and nationalism does not really need a particular uh, event or a site or anything we just have to go back to the writings of edward galeano eduardo galeano uh, in terms of uh, latin american politics and culture he talked about uh, rp uh, g talked about uh, cultural nationalism and it is you know nationalism is the subliminal presence of the of ideology which which people begin to live and breathe because that's how they identify themselves as at a very primordial level you know wo wahan pe ja ke reason rationality sara khatam ho jata hai and that is why the the possibility of windfall gains nobody can predict that so when everybody and amitabh is a very dear friend and old friend or uh, uh, you know when when uh, sophologists uh, b- talk about predictions ki acha yahan pe itna aayega two two seats here or four seats there it's very very amusing because uh, sometimes yes they they <coughs> they get it spot on but it's all very you know it's it's okay. very interesting but maria let me let yes. me uh, 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 finish yeah when we talk about uh, shama shama brought in the idea of silent voters why do we always assume that the silent voter is not going to vote for the bjp and they are only silent because they 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 are afraid if we don't say that we are going to uh, vote the bjp we are going to be penalized right of in 2019 we saw it there was again this this conversation around uh, silent majority the silent voter who was that silent majority for it was for the bjp so let's not fool ourselves that the silent majority is only for uh, uh, you know for the opposition and not that third thing that i want to say uh, and he um, uh, sandeep ji ji said it very very clearly ki ye 2047 uh, project you know yes, the, the southern term. states the yes. long term and we have seen how it has worked and how committed uh the bjp is about its long term plans west bengal when they started campaigning many years ago everybody was laughing at 2017. them 2017 everybody was laughing at them northeastern states everybody was laughing at them oh no no they are you know they, they cannot dent this and uh, we are the, the kind of people and you know this this kind of cultural hubris we are never you know people of this state are never going to vote the bjp what happened cadres from uh left. The, the left and the congress yeah, they, they you know lock stock barrel yes they move to the bjp so these windfalls this this is something yes, that we do not uh, yes. estimate so then when we talk about this windfall this or or that understanding of rp i am coming to you you know yes uh, sandeep shasi one moment but you know th- there is that take that anija had about hinduism but i think for of all mr modi it's not limited to that there is much more to hinduism than what is often dis- you know dismissed by his critics that it's not that aspect of it it is about that greater connect to it so that it has larger uh, acceptability to make it more nationalistic is that question to me maria yes Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, I undoubtedly accept the point you are making that the type of uh, there are multiple narratives being created. Hmm. Uh, nationalism is one of them, but I think more important than nationalism, the narrative of the prime minister's leadership, which yes. they are creating, which I think is the centerpiece of the campaign. Whatever little I have seen of the campaign across the country. it seems to be a clear 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 focus on the prime minister both from the prime minister himself and from the party i will not be surprised if all the nda candidates say 
to their voters that you are not voting for me in this election you are voting for Mr. another Mr. seat for the prime minister so i think that is going to be the centerpiece of their campaign i think he said that in 2019 not yes. that 2014 it starts yes. that narrative actually starts on the chastri in 2014 i yes. remember and it worked when he said that yeah. each and every vote for kamal is actually coming to me that's yeah. right that's what he said yes uh, mr can i just make another small point yes please go ahead sir uh, i am happy that i amused people by saying two seats here and four seats there but that is based on hard data and not based on any uh, very very small comment of mr shastri is the air from somewhere yes. mr shastri uh, Uh, sorry, no, no, no punches. But fact is, I was make, I was trying to understand when you were trying to explain South by your t- by your also configuration, we are doing well in South. Yes. Mark so he has actually uh, complimented you. Yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So it, perhaps it, what happened in Bengal and Odisha can be the potential breakout moment in South. That's exactly yes. what I am yes, saying. Yes, please go yes. ahead, Shama. You have to unmute yourself. um i just want to say one thing you know let's not take the indian voter for granted now wherever i hear mr modi speeches whether it's the rbi or anywhere else he's discussing about he's already taken oath and it's his third term i mean the indian people are very upset about it and and they think you know how dare he insults us he's already thinking before we go to vote out there that he's already won and never has this happened before Number two, let's understand that we have an unemployment rate of 10.2 percent according to CMIE. The price rise is very bad now. I am in my home state. Ramadan is happening, and and we have the Vishu, which is coming on the 14th, another festival. Eid is around the corner, and they're saying, ma'am, it is unbelievable the price rise. Something which we used to pay before five thousand rupees if we go to a supermarket. we pay around 11 to 12000 so it is not double it's more than double the increase so there is definitely an issue and when you talk about nationalism it is not a what is nationalism how do you be proud of your country is it when you're able to get jobs when you're able to you know get student loans uh, look at manipur isn't that also a part of nationalism where there are more than 150 people dead around yes. around I'll a lack of play and they've not gone back to their homes they're still yes. displaced and last rp to the respond Chinese to that india has not gone there yes. i mean i want to know what is exactly nationalism your bilkis banu's rape is released is it so, i mean what Salim is happening da- darani darani you wanted to make a point about sort of nationalism yes. i darani darani you wanted to make a point about women that was protesting yes. and the prime minister of india keeps quiet and bridge bush and sharan saying is still there is that not nationalism yes. i want to know all these things okay sir so salim dar darani daran please go ahead you wanted to make a point sir no see i think uh, the previous panelists who spoke also been talking about bjp having some indoors in tamil nadu with i do not see any indoors of uh, bjp into into tamil nadu 2022 municipal elections one candidate supported by bjp close to quantum got one vote right so there has been no vote share from 2% which i had earlier for the bjp so i do not see bjp as an alternate to to the dravidian party i am very happy that right now we are in a stage where it's dmk and the su but having said that bjp is not even very close to becoming the number 2 party in tamil nadu i think that is very important i want to impress upon the fact not not 24 not in 26 not in 31 not in 36 there is no grassroots there and they may come and play all sorts of religious politics in tamil nadu but remember tamil nadu has always been a religious state 1967 when dmk formed the government 80% of the Tam- uh, tamilians were, were uh, devout hindus but still they voted for dmk because we keep religion out of politics yes right we, so we, here right? that is the reason why perhaps bjp is talking nationalism here not as much as religion but even nationalism what we w- w- people in tamil nadu know that nationalism not going to put Put on their plate. We want development. What development has taken place? Let me put this in perspective. From 2004 to 2014, Indian per capita GDP grew by about 2.5 times, from 500 uh, US dollars approximately to about 600 US dollars to 1,500. But from 2014 to 2024, Indian GDP grew only by 1.4 times, from 1,600 to about 2,250 dollars. Even Bangladesh per capita GDP over 2022. earlier uh, prime minister modi used to say that bangladesh are coming to afghan i mean uh, coming to assam but now bangladesh is making fun about indians 
Okay, then, Amita, the opposition says that there are enough and more issues from price rise to rising unemployment that has almost penetrated through this fort of uh, 303 seats, then why are, uh, you know, can those issues have an impact which can cascade? See, in India, the voting is not only on issues. I think that's the first and foremost thing which we have to understand. Issues just play a limited role in the voting consideration of people. The highest consideration in a Lok Sabha election is the prime ministerial phase, as we were discussing. That is 37% people in 2019 voted in the name of the prime minister. And the latest MOTN shows that 55% want Modi and 14% want Rahul SPM. So the lead is 41. Hmm. So this 37 multiplied by 41 comes to around 15-16% vote share and that is the difference between BJP and Congress. Congress got 19% in 2019, BJP got 37%. That's number one. Number two, even unemployment price rise. Unless unemployment becomes the number one motivating issue of the unemployed people, it's not going to create any ripple. Absolutely. That's also a fact. So unemployment may not be the issue of the unemployed. Maybe it is nationalism, maybe it is Hindutva, maybe they are voting on the basis of the prime ministerial uh, faces. And just one last point, we were talking about where the seats will come from. 72 seats BJP was runner-up. Hmm. 50 of these are in West Bengal, Odisha and UP. Even if it does not win any seat, additional seat in South of India, it needs to crack these three states. South of India is not important at all in the context of the Mission 370 or 400 because the 1303 even by not opening their account in Kerala and Tamil Nadu. So it's not going to change much okay. even if they are not able to win significant. All right, let me try and wrap up the conversation with two senior veteran journalists here in the studio, Aarti and Nirja. Nirja, beginning with you. There is a narrative, there is a counter-narrative. Counter-narrative is visibly weak to the narrative which is being set by the BJP. It's about Prime Minister Modi because he himself is on the ticket. Uh, you know, and that is the reason, do you think, the fort which was built in 2019 will not be breached. So it will be about gaining, not losing. Uh, Narendra Modi, you know, the suspense today is not about who will, who is winning. Hmm. The suspense is on the number of seats that the BJP will get. And the suspense is on what Mr. Modi is going to do when he comes back to power, if he gets 270 seats, if he gets 304 seats or he gets 400 seats, what will he do in all these kind of scenarios? What is very curious and many people have asked this question as one travels around, why is Mr. Modi talking of Char So Par? Because of Rajiv Gandhi. He is always believed in, you know, setting better targets in, for himself. In, it's no, not like no. Amit Shah. You <laughs> no. know, Amit Shah, when he gave, gave the target, he said to pep up the kader. Hmm. This is the Prime Minister of India. Speaking talking. on the floor of the house. Therefore, what does he, speaking on the floor of the house, therefore, what does he have in mind? Hmm. And somewhere there are stray voices, Maria, whether they will add up to anything, the, the silent water, Shama ho, hopes for maybe wishful thinking. Huh? But some people are saying, Pooch rahe hai, kuch zada to nahi ho ra. <laughs> Matlab, will we become a one party system? Country? Complete uh, dominance. Uh, so this is worrying some people, but does this add up to, a, you know, does it counter the rush of hmm. uh, appeal? that the other side has that is the question and it is not it may be dissatisfaction a colleague of mine went to west U, west up villages uh, just two days ago or baat kar rahe tain, people talked about economic hardship about hurting mm. joblessness price rise and when you ask them who will you vote for bjp <laughs> because who's there on the, the other side, side. and yes somehow lenge Huh. So now can you, and he remains popular, so it is dissatisfaction, yes, but is it across? It no. Is no, anger is not anger. there. Yes, no. and the last so, word, please so go. So, Maria, I mean, yes. Nija is a real veteran at covering elections. <laughs> uh, I've also been around for quite some time, as you can see from my grey hair. <laughs> and one thing I've noticed about every election, 
when you go on the ground, people will complain about price rise. Yeah. They will complain about oh. unemployment. They but will complain they about bichli sadak. Whatever surrender. They will complain ah. about bichli <coughs> sadak pani. You know, I mean, these are constant <coughs> complaints from people yeah. because yeah. these are real issues that yeah. affect people. But they very rarely vote on these issues. Yes. Usually, That's it's an really emotive right. issue that you know brings the voter out and makes them cast the makes him or her cast the vote in a particular direction. <laughs> So that's the point. What is the emotive issue this time? The opposition has not come up with an emotive counter narrative. The BJP has an emotive counter narrative, has an emotive narrative, which is about Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his leadership. You know, I think Sandeep, uh, uh, you know, Shivasa put it very well that that is the centerpiece of the BJP's campaign. Right. It's not nationalism. It's not that. Modi, it's no about man. Modi, the man. man. And that two, is the two seconds. Two, two seconds first to him, and then yes, two seconds. Yes. <laughs> One, uh, uh, Shama. Uh, sorry to uh, puncture your com complete uh, data on on the uh, rozgar and berozgari. EPF for data says 18 crore people got job in last 10 years and 4 crore people got the Mudra Yojana loan. Each one of got one more extra, I mean 26 crore people. And today's your thing, or that you are, are, that you are a woman, you are Kisan, Mazdoor, Berozgar, only Berozgar is uh, okay. Mr. Mr. Rahul Gandhi. Two you seconds. Know, think, yes. Inflation and everything, uh, I agree completely with Shama, but is the Indian voter, and an Indian voter is actually a very discerning and punishing voter. I have to say this, the moment we start insulting that voter, yes. it, you it can't punishes take you. You yes. can't take for granted. Right. The opposition so has taken the Indian voter for granted. All right, this is what Nija Chaudhary, Aarti Jairat, R.P. Singh, Sandeep Shastri, uh, Shama Muhammad, Amitabh Tiwari, Salim uh, Dharani Dharan, thank you so much for joining us. This is a conversation which will continue, of course, with many episodes of The Big Fight coming up on various analysis of the upcoming elections. Thanks so much for watching. I'll be seeing you next week.